Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise ye the name of the Lord. So if you're breathing, can you just open up your mouth and praise him? Hallelujah. Come on. If you're breathing, come on, lift up your hands, open up your mouth, and begin to bless his name. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Come on, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Or taste and see that the Lord is good. Or magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. We give reverence, honor, and glory to the King of kings, to the Lord of lords, and to the great I am, your protector, your provider, your healer, your deliverer. We came to bless your name. We came to lift you. I'm out of your shot. We came to exalt your name today because you are worthy. You're worthy to be praised. Come on. You're worthy to be lifted. You are worthy to be honored. You are worthy to be praised. Father, we give you glory. I'm out of your shire. Father, we give you praise. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on. We came to tell you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for keeping us. Come on. Thank you for carrying us. Yes, Lord. Thank you for protecting us. Father, we owe you praise and worship. The Bible says it's our reasonable service to lift you and to bless you and to give you glory. Oh, God, we give you glory. We give you glory. Come on. We give you glory. We give you glory. Oh, we give you glory. Yes, Lord. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Hey, we give you glory. Yes, Lord. We give you glory. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, Lord. We give you glory. We give you glory. Hey, hey, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. It is a privilege and an honor to be back in the house of worship one more time. Thank you for keeping us. Hey, hey. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody got a hallelujah, you got to go to inside. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Hallelujah. Thank you for keeping us. Hey. Through danger, seen and unseen. Thank you, Jesus. We just came to tell you thank you. Yes, Lord. We just came to tell you thank you. Hey. We just came to tell you thank you. Hey. We just came to tell you thank you. Hey, we just came to lift your name. Hey, we just came to bless your name. You've been so good. Hey, you've been so kind. You've been so faithful. Hey, we bless you. Hey, we lift you. Hey, we honor your name, God. We honor your name. Hey, we honor your name. I said we honor your name. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, we will bless your name. We will lift your name. Hey, we will honor your name. Oh, come on and bless him. Oh, come on and lift him. Come on and bless him. Hey, hey, hey. My little old shy. You have to excuse me. I've been in consecration all month. And when you be in the presence of the Lord, he downloads some things. 
and he elevates you and he develops you. So every time that we enter into the house of worship, we should have a praise on our lips. We should have a praise in our heart, a praise of gratitude. Why? Because he could have left us where he found us. He could have left us where he found us. But thanks be unto God that you made a consideration to allow us to continue praising your name, to allow us to lift your name, to allow us to magnify. We invite your presence in the room. We invite your Holy Spirit in the room. We invite your presence in the room. Rest rule and abide. Rest rule and abide. Rest rule and abide. Rest rule and abide. Oh, we open up our hearts to you this morning. Come on in. I said, come on in. Come on in. King of glory. Come on in. Strong tower. Come on in. Clap your hands like the enemy is in between them and bless him real good. Bless him real good. Bless him real, real good. Ooh, the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast unto the Lord. The hammer shall be glad and tell your voice. Magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Come on, did you come to praise him? Did you come to exalt him? Did you come to bless his name? Has he been good to you? Has he been great to you? Has he been faithful? You want to clap your hands all over the room? Clap your hands, clap your hands. Say, hey, hey. Bless his name, bless his name. Bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, Lord. We want the glory of the Lord to rise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we bless you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We want your glory. We want your glory. Yeah, yeah. We want your glory. Yes, Lord. Hey, we want your glory, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Come on, clap your hands all over the room. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Clap those hands yeah. Let the glory of the Lord hey, rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord yeah, rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. One more time. Hey, let the glory of the Lord rise 
rise among us at the glory of the Lord. Rise among us, let the praises of our King. Rise among us, let it rise. Yeah. So we cry, oh, oh, let it rise. Oh, oh, oh. we cry, oh. The glory of the glory of the Lord rise. Glory of the Lord rise. Praises of my King. The rise. Come on, say, let the glory of the Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, 
say let your glory let your glory glory let it rise let your glory let your glory let it rise let your glory let it rise let your glory let it rise Anybody want his glory to rise in your life? Anybody want his power to rise in your life? Yeah. I need you to sound off like you need his glory and power to rise in your life. Your hands right there. Do you really need his power this morning? Do you really need his power this morning? Do you really need his power this morning? Listen, the old folks used to say, I can't do nothing until he comes. I don't know about you, but I've come to the realization in my life that there is nothing that I can do without the power of God. I need the power. Why? Because it's through his power that I'm able to think right. It's through his power that I'm able to live right. It's through his power that I'm able to conquer whatever is in front of me. I need some people this morning that came with an expectation to open up your mouths and shout power, Lord! Power. I need power. Yeah, I need power. I need power. 
I need power. Power. I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. I need power. Power that will change my life. Power that will change my circumstances. Power that will change whatever I'm facing. I need power. I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it in order to live right. I need it in order to think right. I need it in order to be right. I need your power. Somebody open up your mouth and shout, Lord, send your power. Send it, 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 send it. Somebody will say, send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. Lord, let your Holy Ghost come on down. Said we can't do nothing until you send it on down. We need it, we need it. We need it, we need it. We need it, we need it. I dare somebody to shout God we need it until you feel something. I dare somebody to shout God I need you until he begins to shake whatever the enemy has thrown in your way. We need it, we need it. We need it, we need it. Power. Power, Lord. Power. Power, Lord. Power. Power, Lord. Send it on down. Send it on down. Send it on down. Send it on down. Power. Power, Lord. Power. Until my mind gets right. Power. Until my children act right. Power. Until my marriage acts right. Power. Until I act right. Power. Power, Lord. Send your power. Send your power. Send your power. Power until healing comes. Power until deliverance comes. Power until things change. Power until things shift. Behold, I have given unto you power. No weapon. No devil. No force. No witchcraft. No wickedness. No he say, no voodoo, but behold, I have given you power to break generational curses, power to make better decisions, power to lay hands on the sick and they recover, power to lay hands on yourself and you come together, power. Power, 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 power. I dare somebody, whatever it is this morning, put it on your mind and begin to speak right now. You have given me power over it. You have given me power over it. Every struggle power over it. Every addiction power over it. Every heartache power over it. Every stronghold power over it. Every shackle power over it. Every yoke power over it. I dare somebody that believe in this power to open up your mouth and bless God right here the devil is a liar the devil is a liar 
we came to serve him notice this morning you got power over it the devil is a liar we came to serve him notice this morning you got power over him I got power power over cancer power over diabetes power over suicidal thoughts power over depression power over anxiety I got power you got power you got power you got power you got power I dare somebody to start moving their feet and start walking in the power that God has given you. I, I dare you to begin uh, to move your feet uh, and start walking in the power uh, that God has given you. Uh, I dare somebody uh, to begin moving their feet uh, and walking in the power uh, that God has given you. Uh, begin declaring it. Uh, begin decreeing it. Uh, begin speaking it. Uh, I got power. I got power. I got power. I got power. I dare you to take dominion over everything the enemy has tried and remind the devil I have power power you won't win I got power over you You can praise him. It's okay to praise him. some old school fools to put your hands together and begin clapping like you remember clapping. By now somebody would have been rocking. I remember my grandmother she didn't have the best shout. But when something would come over her, she had a bounce. I didn't understand then, but I would understand now she would. Because when she thought of the goodness of Jesus, she said, I don't have no fancy footwork. She said, but God, I'll bounce for you. Oh, yes, she would. Now clap your hands right there. when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me 
my soul cries out, hallelujah. And I thank God for saving me. Anybody just glad to be saved? In the world that we live in, and so many are losing their minds, I just want to praise God for still being saved. Somebody will yell out, save and sanctify. And they don't say this no more, but fill with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, been baptized in his name, running on to see what the end's going to be. Yeah. We don't understand the importance of when they used to say, he kept me in my right mind until he keeps you in, in your right mind. And what is a right mind? That is a mind to want to serve him. A mind to want to please him. A mind to want to honor and worship him. But those that are watching live and those that are here, grab your Bibles, your tablets, your smartphones, whatever you have. In Deuteronomy, the second chapter, the second verse. Then God said, you've been going around in circles in these hills long enough. Go north. Yeah. You've been going around in circles in these hills long enough. Go north. Father, you're already here. And we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We magnify you. Now speak a word to your people. Help us to articulate your word with clarity, power, and authority. We do nothing on our own, but we do all things through you that gives us strength. It is in that name that is above all names that we do all things. Jesus the Christ. We know that is so. Yeah, you've been going around in circles in these hills long enough. You may take your seats. Go north. This morning, my brothers and sisters, I stand before you to say that we live in a society and time where people have become comfortable with maintaining a lifestyle of being stuck. Yeah, we, we live in a society and time where people have become comfortable maintaining a lifestyle of being stuck. If we are honest with ourselves, it is paraded as the new norm. Yeah, it, it's cool now to be stuck. It's okay now to continuously repeat the same cycles over and over again. But changing the direction of your life will require you to change what you think about life. Yeah, because a lot of times we spin our wheels with a ideology or a mindset of thinking it's okay not to be okay. It's okay as long as I can get myself together and put on a front and pretend for others so that they can think that I'm all right. But this morning, my brothers and sisters, I, I challenge you because King Solomon wrote in Proverbs 2, 23 and 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you are honest with yourself, when was the last time that you took inventory of your life? When was the last time you took inventory of your circumstances and your position? When was the last time when you looked at your life and was able to admit, God, I really don't have it all together? 
Yeah, yeah, because oftentimes we have a definition that we want to define others by that we don't even match ourselves. So the moment we find ourselves being real, when was the last time that you actually talked to God and told him, I'm jacked up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When was the last time you told God, my mind is just everywhere? When was the last time you told God, I really need you to fix me with my problem and I'm not focusing on what other problems others have? Yeah, what, 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 happened? what happened when we would, would confess and tell God, listen, I, I, I need you. I, I'm not worrying about what Sister Sue is doing because I got my own issues myself. I'm not worrying about what Brother Leroy is struggling with because if truth be truth, there's a struggle that I'm wrestling with myself inside of my members. Yeah, it's inside of me. It's, I'm not, it's not the enemy. It's the inter me that I'm wrestling with God. I, I need help with me right now mm, I, I can't point fingers I, I need too much of your help I, I can't call you out because I need too much of his help I can't put you on blast because I need his help too and if we be real and if we, we, we be honest uh, there are things that you told God uh, that you didn't want to tell him uh, so why would you be worrying about the struggles that someone else had yeah, yeah, there's things that you didn't want to tell God, but he already knew. Yeah, there's some things that you didn't want to bring back up, but there is the reality that there is something that must change in order for your life to change. But the worst thing you could ever do is develop a mentality that you got it all right when you really don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a difference when you are admitting, God, I need your help. But there's another thing when you are sitting there and you're trying to front and we putting up a facade. Massage. When we know that we haven't crossed every T, we haven't dotted every I, but isn't it funny that the people that don't meet the standards try to set the standards? Yeah, yeah, you, you, you ain't got it all together, but somehow you can figure out how you can define how somebody else should be living their lives. But I'm in a place in my life, but I don't can't, I can't, and I will not worry about what social media says about them. I won't worry about who they put on blast. I won't worry about what they said they did, because my reality is there's something in everyone's closet that you're praying that God, you just need to keep it under cover for me because I can't afford for it to become who I am no longer. Yeah, yeah, you got something there. It's something there. I don't care who you are. If a man says he's not a sinner or hasn't sinned, he is a, a liar. But if you are honest with yourself and you take inventory, you can rule yourself into the equation and rule others out. But some of us have Tunnel vision syndrome. Yeah, we become so comfortable with where we are that we've overlooked the trauma around us. Yeah, we become so comfortable with where we are that now we can't even focus on God fixing us because we're trying to fix everybody else. Have you ever been around somebody like that? Have you ever been in the company of somebody like that? And they can tell you everything that's wrong with you, but they can't see what's wrong with them. They can tell you every time that you suck your tooth or teeth. Yeah, they can tell you every time you rolled your eyes, but they can't tell you all the struggles that they have and they haven't addressed their own issues but listen one thing you won't not or you don't want to do is find yourself in a place of having tunnel vision in other words the only thing you could see is what in front of you and you're missing all of the chaos and circumstances and trauma that is around you I refuse to be in a place that I will build my life on circumstances that are not conducive to my well-being because I'm worried about what people are going to say about me now. 
Yeah, I, I can't afford to miss God worrying about how they're going to feel if, I, if I'm moving this way. I'm not moving different. I'm just trying to move for purpose. I'm just trying to move in my destiny because one thing I will not do is mismanage the season that I am in now worrying about where God is getting ready to take me. Why? Because if truth be truth, you really don't know where he's going to take you. And some of us has, have mismanaged our moments now worrying about where he was going to take us later. What are you saying Dr. Tim? You don't know the plans for your life. God does. You don't know the road that he's going to instruct you to take. He does. You don't know the way that he's going to send you. He does. You don't don't know the affliction that you're going to have to face or adversity that's going to come in your life God does but if any man trusted in the Lord he would not let them be made ashamed so I made up in my mind regardless of what comes and what goes as long as I got Jesus I got more than enough to finish what he started what are you saying because he's the God that will finish the work that he has started I knew your end before your beginning so when you're in the middle let's face the reality I already know the plans for you you just gotta keep walking you gotta keep walking you gotta keep walking you gotta keep walking because you can't worry about what they said you can't worry about how they feel all you have to worry about is how you please me but some of us will become so comfortable with trauma that we make trauma okay yeah, 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 yeah. We'll make trauma as if it's okay. Girl, you know he been doing that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, she been acting like that. We have made it normal to accept what God has considered abnormal. Yeah, yeah. We've taken circumstances. I don't care what they did. Oh, we just going to work through it. No. Oh, you showed up to the cookout. Eyes blue. You showed up. There's scratches on your neck. And you telling everybody, you know, we just go through a season in the fighting. No, you've taken what is abnormal and you've made it normal. How many circumstances in your life that God has deemed trauma that you said it's just okay? When we are set in our ways bound by our perspectives and stuck in our thinking, we repeat cycles. Yeah, but generational cycles are only generational decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Generation, the cycles are only generational decisions. Let me pause for the cause and tell someone that you're one decision away from changing your whole life. This morning, I came to talk to a few folks and people who have made up in their minds that settling isn't in their DNA and showing up today to yell out, enough. Enough, 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 enough of that, enough of this, enough of settling for what God has not purposed for my life, enough of dealing with trauma that he told me to release, enough of dealing with heartache that he told me to walk away from. This morning I came to talk to some realistic folks that have made up, I showed up broken, but today I'm decreeing and declaring that this is the last time huh, that I'm going to cry over that last thing. Huh. This is enough. This is enough. This is enough. Enough. Enough is not saying I quit, but it is an indication that I've reached my limits of repeating this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because just because you're familiar with doing it doesn't make what you're doing right. Yeah, we, we, we will take what's wrong and we will say, well, God, you know what? It, it, it might be right a little bit. Um, it, it might be right just a tad bit. But how many things and situations have you overlooked when God told you to run? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many things have you overlooked when God told you just leave it alone? How many things have you overlooked when God told you um, I, I will bow out gracefully right through here? It doesn't mean that you are 
quitting. But can I tell you something? When you've experienced trauma, you know the cycles and signs that's going to lead to it. Am I talking to anyone real this morning? Yeah, can I tell you something? When you've had the flu, you know the symptoms of the flu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you when you had a dog, you know the symptoms of a dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you had um, a no good joker or a no good her, you know the symptoms of a no good joker and a no good her. But what has happened is we ignored the trauma and the signs that God is showing us. Why? Because we rather just have something to say we got it versus having what God says is in His will. But am I talking to some real folks this morning that showed up and said, God, if I I got to walk by myself. As long as I'm in your will, I'm going to be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather be in your will than spending nights crying about who's not laying beside me. Yeah, I'd rather be in your will than spend my days wondering if you at work or if you playing. I'd rather be in your will than sitting here wondering what's next for my life when I miss all the opportunities that you have provided for my life. Some of us have missed opportunities simply because we didn't know when to say no. Some of us have missed our purpose because we didn't know when to say enough. We have made abnormal circumstances tolerable when God's intention is for us to just move on on. Never allow what you've experienced to make you settle for where you are. Yeah, it's been rough, but I can't settle here. It's been difficult, but I can't settle here. It's been complicated, but I can't settle here. I don't understand it all, but I can't settle here. I can't figure it out by myself, but I can't settle here. I don't know really where he's going to take me, but where he's taking me is better than settling where I am. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how he's going to fix it, but I'd rather trust him than settling for what I'm dealing with right now. Why? Because I made up in my mind that there's a lot of things that I dealt with in 2020. There's a lot of things I dealt with in 21. There's a lot of things I put up in 22. There's a lot of things I tolerated in 23. But I showed up in 24 to let the devil know in whoever else enough is enough. Why? Because I cannot afford to settle for where God is getting ready to take me. I dare somebody to open up their mouths and shout, enough! Enough, 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 enough. So the text says, now Moses has come out of Egypt. He has come out of Egypt. God has brought them over or through the Red Sea. They have traveled through the wilderness, but now they are at this mountain. And God has to give them a wake-up call because simply they became complacent. Yeah. See, the thing is, is when God blesses us, we think that he intended for us to stay some places. Uh, but because he moves from glory to glory doesn't mean you have to settle for where you are and think that he's still there. We are in so many situations and God been left, but we're still there. Yeah, yeah, God's been um, exit and we're still trying to show up and bring him in it. But God makes a call and he asks Moses, he says, Moses, how long are they going to continue walking around this mountain in circles? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I became a, a little puzzled. I became a little puzzled because in my mind, I begin to wonder how in the world can you walk around a mountain for this long and you don't see familiar signs. When you drive down Cabin Creek long enough, you can tell me what you see. 
Yeah, you can tell me about the new housing development down there. If you're coming this way on the right, you can tell me that there's trees um, after you pass that a road and a few other things, a house here and there. But how in the world can you travel this road for as long as you may travel it? But if they begin to cut down trees, if they begin to build more houses, how in the world do you miss it? So the Bible says that they are traveling around this mountain for 38 years. For 38 years, they're walking in circles, but they did not even came to the conclusion that maybe we're stuck. Why? Because when you refusing to go where God wants you to go, or you're seeing the obstacles rather than the power of God, some of us will choose to be stuck. What is it in your life that you have refused to release to God? Um, because you got to understand that um, a cycle of unproductivity foster a life of repeated patterns. Yeah, 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 you heard me. A cycle of unproductivity fosters a life of repeated patterns. What are you saying, Dr. Tim? Um, um, if you transform the way you think, you uh, transform the way you live. But some of us are still living beneath our privileges simply because we fostered the trauma and we told God it was okay as long as they think I'm alright. But is there anybody that showed up this morning uh, that has made up in their minds that I can no longer uh, live in this place. Uh, I've been going around in circles uh, too long. I'm tired uh, of seeing the same thing. Uh, I'm tired uh, of being around the same company. Uh, I'm tired uh, of eating the same food uh, when I know that you have purpose for my life. Uh, what do I need you to get? Uh, once you become exposed, uh, you can't get unexposed. Well, some of us want to remain unexposed because becoming exposed will challenge us to have to do better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being exposed will challenge you to have to live better. And if truth be truth, some of us don't want to come up to the standard because God is going to require more from us. So what do we do? We make excuses for how we live. We make excuses for doing what we do. We make excuses for why we don't want to grow. And now we're making excuses for still going around in circles. Can I tell you something? They're not playing Soul Train no more. Um, so DJ ain't dropping the hottest track. Um, there is an Afros of bell bottom pants and platform shoes. Why? Because that cycle has ended. How many cycles in your life have you continued to try to repeat and you fostered it to make it a lifestyle and God says I really want to change you but I need somebody to open up their mouths uh, and make it up in their minds that God uh, I've had enough. I had enough uh, of dealing with heartaches. Uh, I've had enough of dealing uh, with jokers uh, that did not have my best interest at heart. Uh, I've had enough uh, of being in circles uh, that did not put you first uh, and acknowledge you in all of their ways uh, and now seeking your path for their lives. Uh, I've had enough of being around uh, people that's not heading uh, in the direction of better uh, because I'm looking for better. I need somebody to believe with me and shout I had enough. I had enough. I had enough because I cannot afford to mismanage another moment when I've already mismanaged a few of them. What are you saying, Dr. Tim? Yeah, we've all had moments that we have mismanaged. But I showed up this morning to ask you, how will you handle this time? Yeah, yeah. How will you handle this season? How will you handle this relationship? How will you handle these kids? Yeah, you 
said, we ain't all raised the kids right, but you got an opportunity to raise another one right. But don't mismanage this one like you've mismanaged the other ones. I need God to help me in this season. Why? Because I've seen signs of repeating cycles and I will no longer walk around this same mountain today. I need somebody that has been heading in the wrong direction to pivot your position and shout, I'm heading north. I've had enough of this. I've had enough of that. I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough because I understand. Stop um, creating monuments where God intended just to be moments. Yeah, yeah, you got to stop creating monuments where God only intended it to be moments. What are you saying, Dr. Tim? We have erected imageries and images to remind us of where we've been. And God says, you don't need a reminder of her in moments when I'm trying to push you somewhere else. Could it be that the children of Israel would not stop going around this mountain because they erected a monument to remind them of where they were that they did not understand that this was just a moment. How do you know this Dr. Tim? Well the Bible says that the journey to the Red Sea into Canaan was only 11 days. So how in the world did they end up circling around the same problem huh, for 38 years. Huh? Why? Because God needs you to wake up. Huh? He needs you to wake up huh? because he don't need you going into a promise huh, with baggage that you should have left huh, and where you came from. Huh? But I made up in my mind huh, that I cannot afford to go huh, into this year. Huh? It's just January. Huh? But whatever it is the devil told you huh, that you're still wrestling with, huh? I dare you to leave it here today huh? because in February, huh, it gotta die. I can't take it with me no longer because I I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough. So you got to stop creating monuments where God intended just to be moments. You know, the term Mount Seir is most often used simply as a geographical marker to explain where something happened. Um, he said it happened here, but you don't have to stay there. I know they molest you, but at some moment you got to wake up and say, I had enough of allowing the devil huh, to torment my mind huh, about what God has huh, delivered me from. Huh, is there anybody huh, that has showed up this morning huh, and you are saying, huh, Lord, I've had enough huh, of spending hours huh, worrying about huh, the approval of people. Huh, as long as I got you, huh, I got more than enough huh, to do this skin. I need somebody that showed up to open up their mouths and decree over their lives. Yes, it happened, but this is enough. I've had enough of bad financial decisions. I've had enough of experience the like. I've had enough of ramen noodles and sausages because I made up in my mind it was good for the season but I'm no longer there you gotta say I know you've been rocking with me for a while but maybe this next move I can't take you there because I'm trying to go one place and you're trying to go another but you gotta make the hard decision and cut the ties and shout enough I'm moving forward into what God has for my life well the Bible says that for 38 years they walked around in circles but I'm tired of going in circles and I gotta experience what my mama experienced if it was 38 years somebody child became grown 
if it was 38 years by now somebody got grandkids if it was 38 years by now you got great grands but I made up in my mind that the cycle will end with me because I'm standing up and I'm declaring over their lives that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and if God be for me he can be the more majority of those that are against me when you understand who's on the inside you can step out on faith and say now nah, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that not seen I came to tell somebody lay hands on yourself and on your children and begin to tell them that no weapon that will be formed against you will be able to prosper because I prayed for you and my prayer is that this cycle stops today because I had enough what is enough of settling for less because eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and neither has it entered into the heart I came to tell somebody stand up on your feet and begin to walk it out and shout is this enough I won't keep going around in circles. I've had enough. Say whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Believe whatever you want. But I'm standing on Jesus. Shout enough. It ends today. It ends today. I cannot afford for the patterns that I've experienced for my children to experience them too. 38 years is a long time for walking in circles. And if truth be truth, some of us have been repeating patterns for longer than 38 years. You may have 44. You may have 45. You may have 55. You may have 60. You may have 70 years of repeating the same cycle. But this was one of the first times that when God instructed Moses to tell Israel to turn, <laughs> watch, their obedience is now being played out. God had been asking them to do a whole lot now in almost 40 years, and they still wasn't listening. So how did they end up where they were? God told them, say, listen, I'm, I'm getting ready to let you go out now. You know how you tell your kids. I'm going to let you go outside. But don't you get in that street. Make sure you're in sight where I can see where you are. And about a certain time, make sure you're here before the light come on. Well, God told Israel, he says, now, don't go down here and mess with them good people. They ain't got nothing to do with you. Stay in your lane. He says, because I'm not with you if you try to fight them. I, I'm not, he said, I'm not fighting with you. I, I didn't tell you that you're going here to fight. You're just going to walk through here. But Israel wanted to be Israel. Went out there and tried to fight. And the laws. But isn't that just like us? When life don't pan out how we expect it, then we expect God to save us. 
when we make our own decisions, then we show back up and say, God, you know what? <laughs> you was right. Is there another way now? So they show back up, and God tells them, go back in the wilderness. He says, turn around and go back into the wilderness. What, what does he say? He says, you walked around for 38 years, and now I'm trying to give you instructions that's going to change your life so that you can walk into a promise, but you can't even listen now. He says, so turn and go back in. Then he says, how long are you going to keep walking in the same direction? So in other words, when he sent them back in, he was sending them back in, hoping that they got the lesson, that they would change direction. But they were going in the same way. In other words, you still had the same attitude. You still had the same mindset. Ain't nobody going to tell me nothing. I'm grown. I used to hear old folks used to say, there is no such thing as being grown in Jesus. Because except you come as a child. In other words, you got to have the mindset of able, being able to be taught and able to receive a mindset of you don't know, you just trust God. He says you're not fit for the kingdom. Except you have come as a child, you're not fit for the kingdom. Except you're teachable. In other words, he, he, he don't want to keep repeating the cycle, the patterns that we're, we're used to. So they go back in. He says, listen, what's wrong with y'all? Wake up. Moses, tell them, how long are they going to keep running around here? They ain't got enough scent. Turn north. Because sometimes he has to redirect us because he wants to give you the promises that he has for your life. He just can't give them to you with who you got with you. He want to bless you, but he just can't bless you with the mindset that you have. Because if you mismanage now, you'll mismanage when he gives it to you. I'm shouting, enough, enough of me mismanaging what God has intended for my life. Yeah. Enough will never be enough until you're tired of the same cycles. To experience better, you must first welcome change. We will become so fixated on how we want it to be done and miss God is trying to do it. Enough. Command the people you're about to cut through the land belonging to you and your relatives. He says, listen, you're going through that, but don't, don't fool with them folks. I'm your cousins. Yeah, that's family. Don't, don't fight them. He says, I already blessed you. So you ain't got to worry about what other people got. Just thank them for what he's going to do for you. Is there anybody that made up in their mind this morning that enough is enough? Yeah, enough is enough. Because changing my direction is going to change my life. And Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We give you all the glory. Father, we ask now that your word penetrate the hearts of your people. God, I pray that we spoke a word that challenged them to wake up and understand that they can't continue the same cycles and expect different results. Enough. Enough of financial mismanagement. Enough of relational mismanagement. Enough of mismanaging themselves. Enough of them mismanaging you. Enough. God, we need more. So we got to trust you more. It's not about the materialistic aspect of this thing. But God, we know that we need more of you. Father, in order to be better, we got to choose better. Help us not to make crazy decisions and dumb mistakes over and over again that keeps putting us in a repeated pattern of reliving what you told us to exit from. We trust you this morning. Somebody showed up with and questioned God and you gave them the answer. They had to wake up and realize that it was okay to say enough. And the believing eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and neither has it entered into their hearts the things you have in store. 
we won't continue walking around this mountain. It ends today. Father, there may be somebody that doesn't know you in the pardon of their sins. And this morning we showed up and we confessed that we are sinners because you said that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of them and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, we ask that you forgive us for all of our sins. Father, there may be somebody that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior. And this morning we, we came and we're decreeing and we're declaring and we're testifying that we believe you came from heaven unto the earth. From the earth to the cross. You carried our sins, but you died for them and took them to the grave. And on the third day, you rose, ascended into the heavens, and you sit on the right hand of the Father, waiting for his command for your return for your bridegroom. We confess with our mouths, but we believe in our hearts that you're our Lord and Savior and soon in coming King. Remember every family in bereavement. Comfort them and strengthen them. Those that are sick, heal their bodies. It is in that name that is above all names that we do all things. Jesus the Christ. And we know that it's so. And we say amen. I dare somebody to shout enough, 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 enough. I'm not dealing with that no more. Enough. I ain't crying about spilled milk no more. Enough. 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 Clap your hands and give God glory. Man, put your hands together one more time in the building. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was good for that season, but I'm no longer there. Because guess what, y'all? It's enough. Stop creating monuments where God only intended it to be moments. I can't afford to mismanage any more moments. I just can't do it. To experience better, you must welcome change. Amen. How we always say, when you know better, you do better. Enough. We know what time it is. It's enough. <laughs> Becoming exposed will challenge you to have to become better. Mm. And we have made abnormal circumstances tolerable when God's intention was for us to move on. Did that word convict anybody this morning? Because I know we be out in these streets acting crazy. We be acting fool up sometimes. But guess what? Enough. Enough. Period. That's it. That's a wrap. Stop ignoring the signs of trauma and the signs. So Stop ignoring the trauma and the signs. Enough is enough. God has given us this word uh, through our pastor this morning. I mean, we, we know now. We know we've been exposed. So guess what? We got to do something. We have to do something. I just thank God for that word on today. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I live with him. So I hear him, you know, sometimes studying. But I just thank God that... Um, I just knew, I knew today, I say, they're going to get it. <laughs> but I just thank God so much for our pastor and the mindset that he has to want us to have better. Because he always has that mindset. If he going up, we coming right along with him. Amen. I mean, but it's, it's up to you. It's up to you to want to make that, that decision, you know, to want more and want better for your life. And have the sense to say, when enough is enough. Amen? I ain't up here for all that, y'all. <laughs> I'm grateful, and I thank God for that message on today. I'm up here because we have five ways to give on today. You can give here in person. Amen? Uh, you can raise your hand, and Sister Francis will be glad to serve you with an envelope. You can uh, hit our cash app. That's dollar sign source church SC. Dollar sign source church SC. Amen. You can also go to our website. Um, yeah, y'all help me out. <laughs> go to our website, www.sourcechurchonlinegiving.org. Amen. And, or either you can go to our uh, Facebook page. It's also a link on Facebook. Um, you can click that link and go to Give Online, and you can also give there. Um, we're so honored. You can 
download the Givelify app as well and give there. Amen. We are doing a great work here at the Source Church. We are doing a great work here at the Source Church. And I thank God for that vision that he has given our pastor. Can y'all go back to the giving slide, please? Thank you. Amen. We, we just thank God for that and, you know, how God is going to, you know, bless the Source Church to do great things in this community and, dare I say, around the world. Amen. We're so grateful for our pastor and the, the vision that God has given him in Jesus' name. Um, once again, you can give here in person. Uh, you can get an envelope. You can hit our cash app. Do give Lafay. Um, go to our Facebook page and give there. And also go to our website and give there. We're just honored and grateful. Thank God for our online community. We need to see your face here. Get here. It's so much better here. We're so much better together. Amen. So y'all come check us out. Nine o'clock Sunday mornings. You know you need to be here. You want to be here. Amen. <laughs> it's a it's a sacrifice. Sometimes it's hard. But God will bless that sacrifice. The reward is so much more greater than the sacrifice. Amen. And we just honor and thank God on today. We have a couple of announcements on today. We have our pillow talk that's coming up. Go ahead and make sure you put your questions in the box in the back. That'll be uh, hosted by Pastor Tim and I. It's raw, straight raw, no chaser. <laughs> For couples and singles only. So y'all get here, ask your questions. We want healthy relationships. You know, we want, you know, to be healthy and want you to grow and do it the right way. Um, we have our pastor here, our pastor who is Dr. R.A. Vernon uh, from the Word Church. He has been doing his book tour, and today he will be in Charlotte, North Carolina. But, y'all, it, it truly blessed us. He was here on Friday over at Forward City, and, man, it was amazing. It was so amazing. You just get those little nuggets to, you know, help you with your relationships. And for the singles especially, you know, he gives those nuggets. He also has his book that's, um, that's coming out. It's on pre-order right now, The Ten Rules of Dating. The rules have changed. Um, we'll have that slide up for you next Sunday so you can all, you know, purchase. You have that? Okay, we'll have that next Sunday. Um, yes, uh, for everybody to purchase it if they would like to have it and on today which is the last Sunday of the month we're going to start celebrating our birthdays if you have a birthday in the month of January we want to say happy birthday to you amen happy birthday the only one that I knew about was sister Christina Kears I don't see her today I know you're gonna I know you're watching live you was out there turning up last night boo yeah, we miss you, though. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday. And to everyone that's celebrating, we got LeBron. Happy birthday, LeBron. All right. He growing up. He growing up on us. Yes. So we thank God for you seeing another year. It's such a blessing. It's an honor, you know, to just be here in Jesus' name. Got something. Man, excuse me, y'all. Yes, y'all, and if you would like to be recognized on your birthday, for your birthday month, I want you to let us know in the back. Let's sign up for that. Amen. Let us know when your birthday is because we want to celebrate you. Now, we didn't have the cupcakes today. We're going to have them next Sunday, though. All right. Y'all pray for Lady Mine in Jesus' name. <laughs> be like that sometime. That's enough, Fee. Start putting stuff in your phone so you can remember. <laughs> But we honor you and we celebrate you on today. Now, I have a challenge for each and every one of you on this morning. Y'all, please bring somebody with you. Bring somebody with you. If you know, don't be selfish with the word. Don't be selfish. You know, <laughs> bring the people in the house. That's my challenge for you. Bring someone here. You know, stay on them. Be like, you should really come, you know, check our church out. Please. You know, and if you have not become a member of this great ministry, I encourage you to do that. You've been dating us for long enough. Enough yeah. is enough. Just come on in. We good. You know what I'm saying? We want to grow this ministry. We really do because we need help here. So my challenge for you on this morning is to bring someone. Let's feel, bring someone with you. Let's fill these seats in Jesus' name. 
We're so grateful. We have this nice edifice, but we need the seats. You know, we want to share this good knowledge and, you know, word of God. Amen. Amen. Online, I'm going to get you again. Come on in the house, all right? Come on. Come on. We waiting for you. <laughs> all right, y'all. If we don't have any other announcements, that's a wrap. Let's ride. So, God, we thank you, Father, for another Sunday. Lord God, we love you on today, Father. Lord God, you're good. You are good, God, and your mercy endures forever, Father. Lord God, we thank you for this offering on today, Father God. Lord, it will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, Father. Lord, remember our online community on today, Father God. Put a fire under their feet. Lord God, let them come running into the house and asking, what must I do to be saved, Father? Lord, we thank you right now, Lord Jesus, for all that you have done for us and everything that you will continue to do for this ministry, Lord God. Now we ask, Father, that you remember our pastor on today, Father. He's poured a lot, Father God. Give it back to him, Lord Jesus. Lord, remember him as he prepares for these sermons, oh God. We thank you, God, and we love you, Father God. Keep us all covered as we leave this place, God. No mechanical failures or accidents, Lord. We ask these things. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we do give praise and thanks. Let every heart say amen.